Hello, everybody. This is John Terre, and I am president and CEO of the Boulder Chamber. And I welcome you to one in the series of industry-specific feedback sessions that we are having for our Boulder business community on all of the regulations and guidance for our businesses as they get up and running during this um, safer at home period that we are transitioning to. So I wanna start by saying, first of all, a big thank you, all of you for attending and joining this session. Uh, it's so important that we get our businesses running and we get our economy rolling for the welfare of all of you, your workers, and the customers that you serve. I also wanna make sure to thank our Boulder County uh, Chambers and our economic development partners. This has been a complete collaboration of all of those entities to come together with Boulder County Public Health to make sure we deliver this information to you in an expedited fashion, and that we start by getting your feedback like we are today, and then to have other sessions where we will offer education and information for all of you on the checklist of things you wanna be thinking about as you move forward. And then finally, I wanna make sure to thank Boulder County Public Health. They have been working so hard to make sure that they contain the COVID virus in our community and keep us all safe, absolute priority. But at the same time, they've heard our need and interest in expediting our business, getting our businesses reopened and restarting our economy. And so they've heard that and collaboratively, we're working together to make sure we get our economy running, but also do it in a safe fashion. Now, a couple of ground rules just for our conversation today. First of all, just to make sure that we all know that there are a few regulations that we're gonna be discussing that are coming down from Boulder, or from the Colorado Department of Health, and we are not in a position to adjust those. Also, in addition, there are some critical safety measures that Boulder County public health officials are, want to make sure they implement for our community that they wanna make sure are in place when we reopen. So not everything is on the table for uh, moving and, and adjusting, but at this point, they wanna make sure they get their feedback and hear if there are any red flags. And certainly we wanna have a dialogue about how best to implement these practices um, and, and address the strategies for reopening in a safe fashion. So make sure as we're he you're hearing the information today to think about what, what kind of challenges might you face in implementing uh, these policies and practices and how can we work together to make sure that they work reasonably for your business to operate. So I'm just gonna leave it from there. We're gonna first have some general um, guidance on sort of best practices for all businesses. We're then going to focus down real solidly on field service and real estate uh, business practices that are going to be important for your industry. Um, and I get the pleasure now of handing it off to Lane Drager, who is the community, community mitigation liaison for Boulder County Public Health, who has been a great partner with us in putting together these programs um, and bringing the team together to make sure that we deliver this information to all of you. So with that, I hand off to Lane and thank Lane for um, putting, help us put all this together today. Thank you so much, John. Thank you all for uh, your time today. We really appreciate it. Thank you to all the, the chambers and economic development staff for helping host this and get the word out. We hope to keep you engaged as we continue to move forward. Um, I think Amber, you may have a slide control. So if you- yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. So we really want to kind of talk about what we want to what we want to focus on today. So really help you have an update of what what's going on right now, where we're at, what the status is, uh, our sort of projected timeline now and, and into the future. We want to review the the compliance compliance checklist that we've created and kind of what the concept behind those is and how hopefully they'll be useful to you. We also want to discuss. Uh, those specific challenges, solutions, gaps that you see in what, what we're providing to you now. 
We're gonna work uh, quickly to try to address all of those, as many in the call as we can, but certainly get back to you and we encourage you to stay connected. There's gonna be educational sessions next week and we wanna have continued ongoing dialogue and connection with all of you as we continue to move forward. And really the bulk of what we're gonna do is provide an opportunity for you to ask questions and really hear your feedback. Um, so really what we're gonna be focused on here, uh, in the field service industry, you know, this is kind of a, a quick snapshot, let you have a chance to read through of who's covered here. And if you don't see your exact title, but you're very similar or equivalent, uh, there's, there's a best effort to make them an exhaustive list, but we know that that's probably not the case. So you likely will fall into this same, same area if, you're, if the services you provide really are, are very similar to, to what's listed here. So we certainly have heard a lot of feedback. Uh, public health has, has heard a lot of feedback as this has gone on. And uh, we, we know that uh, it's important to you to have opportunities. And we also know that safety, certainly first and foremost in our mind, we're really here to protect the public health, but we know that's a concern of yours as well, as you wanna reopen, as you wanna protect yourselves, your staff, your patrons. So we want to offer this seat at the table and, and future seats to continue collaborating with you, understand what's going on in your worlds. You know your businesses, you know how to offer insight that we don't have and we desperately want to get from you. We also want to give you the clarity as you're looking to move forward and, and open things up so that you don't have a lot of ambiguity and we don't spend tons of time on the phone trying to answer lots of individual questions. We hope to give enough clarity that, that helps most people uh, open. That being said, certainly if you have individual issues, unique situations, uh, we'll again share contact information. Please reach out to us. That's, that's what we're trying to do. There's been some blanket policies, you know, our stay at home orders that ordered everyone to stay at home. And we're moving to uh, different levels of policy that have more sector specific guidance and requirements. So that's kind of where we're, where we're moving. And we wanna share that kind of outline and uh, the timeline of how we're gonna be moving forward. We, uh, we understand that there's a, a lot of events happening and, and issues that are going on and things that are gonna be important to your, your business. Uh, we, we understand all the different questions that are coming up uh, around what, what's gonna be needed for you to move forward. And hopefully again, we provide a lot of that to you. Um, we also understand that uh, it's an important piece for every business sector and, and for, for us that the public have confidence that as things are moving forward, things are being addressed. We're not leaving gaps out there and that you have that confidence for people to reach out to you for those services and know that you've got their safety uh, in mind. So here's kind of the, what, where we've been at and uh, kind of where we're headed. We had the stay at home order and that was extended uh, in Boulder County because we needed time to make sure those critical pieces were addressed in our community. We needed to see that the testing is, is continuing to amplify. Uh, we also need to make sure we have staff to do the trace investigations and pieces. So there were some critical pieces as well as ensuring that the disease wasn't continuing to escalate within the metro area that needed that delay. It did give us time to help do some of this preparation work that I think will be important for all of you to move on uh, May 9th into that safer at home order. So what does that look like? So right now we still are um, in the stay at home, but we are gonna be evolving to this safer at home. So the guidance and the, all those pieces that we're gonna cover today, hopefully we'll set this idea of, uh, of the new normal. Uh, really, this is gonna take a long time. We really won't see things go back to pre-COVID and maybe ever, to be honest, to some degree, but certainly until we have vaccines, uh, some other additional medical treatments, and seeing that, that higher level of immunity in our community because uh, we're gonna see some of these social distancing practices exist for a long time. But we also know that your businesses can't be shut down until there's a vaccine, that's a long time. So we obviously need to find this middle ground. It's really important that we do this effectively. The things that we want and we know you don't want is uh, orders that move us backwards, back to stay at home. So we absolutely need to make sure we're effective in doing this so some things will ramp up a little bit slower, but again, we, we hope for this to be successful and definitely want your continued support and partnership. 
So the stay at home is again is effective within the metro area until May 9th. Um, so the only real big change, which probably still doesn't apply to, to your sector, was the provision to allow some retail businesses that curbside pickup opportunity so that there is some ability for them to start working with their, their folks and making some, some profit. But we are still really in that stay at home until May 9th. And we're preparing for and help, helping you get prepared for that safer at home. So the, the safer at home has some components uh, in it that are, are, are still consistent. We don't want people just pretending like everything's fine and going out as much as possible. That's absolutely not the message. It's really still stay home except for those, those, those needs where you need to get some of these services that you may provide, but we don't want it to, to be back to, to normal. And again, that that's not, not may not be happening for quite a long time. So we've worked within uh, various sectors to provide some guidance for all of you. Um, here's some of the sectors that, that we've been targeting and that we've been working with and have, have had similar webinars today. All right, so I think uh, this is where we're gonna start to transition over to Ambra, uh, yes. one of our wonderful folks. And so uh, she'll be uh, taking it from here. Thank you, Ambra. Thank you. So my name is Amber Sutherland and I'm the business and events liaison um, for the field services industry and just wanted to thank um, the chamber again for having us today and thank you all for um, being in this session. Um, as you know, we're all trying to, to find the answers to a lot of this and so um, hopefully this will add a little clarity, but it also might bring up, you know, additional questions. So please feel free to, if you have any questions during the next um, part, please put those in the Q&A and we'll address those at the end of the session. Um, but basically the changes really between um, the stay at home and the safer at home uh, for this sector was that they uh, added Boulder County order restrictions on April 27th uh, for real estate. And then um, just in general, many of these services um, under stay at home were deemed essential. Um, so a lot of the construction, landscaping, uh, those types of services were already um, following some of these practices. Um, but basically, this will also just allow additional services to open or expand, you know, as they're related to the construction industry um, and then increasing workforce as they return. So the compliance checklist, um, which um, I believe the chamber had sent out earlier when you registered, but um, they will also uh, resend it out uh, later today um, is what we'll be reviewing today. And so basically, um, you know, compliance with the orders is mandatory. So we have the state order and then we have the Boulder County order. And um, just so you know, the Boulder County order trumps the state order. There's, there's been a few additions that uh, the county has uh, added, especially uh, as it applies to real estate um, that we'll uh, review today. And then uh, the checklist is voluntary. So as you're reading through it, um, you know, please also give us suggestions on that, but just knowing that that is voluntary. Um, under this also, uh, there'll be a self-certification uh, where you can complete the checklist and then self-certify your business. And you can use this compliance checklist as a compliance aid and then as a communication tool with some of your customers and vendors. Um, and then it also does come with a, a public poster that you can hang in your office um, if you're interested in doing that as well. And then as far as for enforcement, um, you know, up front, we're asking for voluntary compliance and we're assuming that everybody will be under compliance and really the best way um, to become compliant is to review the checklist and follow those guidelines. Um, and then we're inquiring and educating first. Uh, so that's really um, how, how we're operating with working with the businesses. Um, and then if issues arrive, uh, we may ask for the checklist to make sure that, um, or re-review the checklist with you if there is an issue that comes up, just to make sure that you're um, in compliance. And then um, if you fall out of compliance, um, we may issue an order to close or civil action um, may be possible. And so um, going over the field services workspaces checklist, um, for this one, most of the other uh, sectors have specifics 
Um, but as you can see, the field services, we have anywhere from, um, you know, going into people's homes to uh, work sites, um, you know, for landscaping, you know, maybe you're just out on a job site as well. So we don't have any specific gen, um, guidance for that, but just look under the general guidance on the checklist for uh, just the very basic um, uh, for these areas. And then as far as, um, give me one second, the field services checklist for employees, um, we're, re we're requiring social distancing is, um, is required here. And it's, this is very important. This is one of the top things I can mention in, um, you know, for all of the field services. So you're looking at meetings, person to person interactions, and then no meetings, trainings of more than 10 people. Um, so if you're doing a safety meeting, you know, on the, on the job site, you know, thinking about that. Um, so if you, you, you have 20 people, you need to break that up into two different training meetings um, for, your, um, for your employees. And then for real estate, no open houses. Um, and then uh, PPE, so facial coverings, masks, and gloves are required um, for the field services industry. And then looking at sanitation, uh, requiring hand washing and sanitation of equipment. Uh, it's very important, especially for uh, landscaping and construction job sites to have hand washing uh, stations available and then also proper signage. And we are requesting that you um, have that available in both English and you know, any other languages um, that may be required um, just so that it's clear. And then uh, with equipment, you know, sanitation, between each use. And so, um, you know, if it's shared equipment, you know, things of that nature. Um, and then employee wellness. So just, you know, making sure that you're checking in with employees on a daily basis to see how they're feeling. Um, and then if they're, they're not sick, uh, or if they are sick, you know, having a COVID-19 plan in place for that. Um, and, and then also um, being aware of the HIPAA requirements under that, um, if somebody does, um, uh, is positive with COVID-19. Um, and we will be providing some additional information on the checklist um, for, so that you can review that and have a, uh, come up with a plan. And then for customers, really it's, um, you know, you're looking at, uh, really it's becoming a paperless uh, way of doing things. So when you're looking at estimates, invoices, and other documentation, anything you can do to make those available electronically um, is advisable. And then also that with payment options. So having that, um, having options available when possible. And then again, maintaining six foot distancing, it's very important for this industry. Um, so. You know, if you're in, if you're in their homes, um, you know, and then when you're uh, having face-to-face -face interaction with meetings on job site, um, on job sites, you know, with clients, um, just maintaining that distancing. And then again, requiring um, face coverings, masks, and gloves um, when you're interacting with customers. And then um, transportation network companies, I'm not sure if we have anybody on the call today. Um, so this could include you know, Lyft, Uber, um, or any other uh, transportation network. Um, looking at uh, only requesting for necessary travel, hand washing before and after the ride, and really you know, sanitizing the vehicles um, between uh, each ride um, would be suggested. And then lastly, just wanted to really dive into the Boulder County order for real estate. Um, and these are, are probably the top five things that I will cover. There are a few more items on there, um, but these just wanted to really address these. Um, as I know, a lot of people have had some questions, especially regarding uh, unoccupied homes. And so we did get clarification through the attorneys that they must be vacant homes only. So nobody residing in the homes and those do need to be by appointment only. And no open houses, no food or beverage offered during showings. And then, you know, um, also with this, anytime you can um, have a virtual tour would be advisable and also, you know, virtual meetings if possible. Um, and looking at social distancing requirements, again, making sure that those are met at all times. So even when closing the deal in real estate, you know, no handshakes, uh, no elbow bumps either. Um, and then for PPE and sanitation, uh, re requiring face masks at all times. And um, uh, the agent must provide gloves and masks for the customer um, when entering the homes. 
and then cleaning and disinfecting between showings. And so thinking about high touch surfaces, um, you know, doorknobs, um, think anything that, you know, is frequently touched in the home um, should be cleaned and disinfected. And then lastly, just maintaining a detailed log of customer interactions for tracking. And so this is really so we can determine, you know, if there was a, a COVID-19 illness, you know, having logs and tracking of where that person may have had exposure. And so that's what we're looking at when maintaining these detailed logs. And just wanted to say that there are quite a few other suggestions listed on the checklist that you'll see um, for, for field services in general. Um, but, um, and then with that, I guess just going into questions and if, if you have any questions at this point, please provide those in the Q&A session or section and we'll answer those at the end. But basically, um, you know, a few of the questions that uh, we would like to get feedback from um, on today would be, uh, you know, what do you have about the checklist? What challenges do you face in your industry? Um, is, and is there a value to a weekly industry work group? Um, so give us your feedback on those. Um, and then feedback about the checklist, so modifications, specifications, are there gaps in the checklist, uh, areas of operation that cover or not covered, um, is the checklist valuable, and um, what else is needed in the checklist, and then industry challenges, you know, what challenges does your industry face at the moment with the safer at home order, and what support does your industry need, you know, from us, um, or clarification. Um, for the safer at home order. And lastly, industry work group, is there value to a weekly COVID-19 compliance work group? What topics should be covered if you have any ideas for those? And then uh, what presenters would you like to see uh, for those industry work group meetings? And if you have any additional questions or suggestions, uh, we do have a call center hotline, and then also uh, you can address those to COVID violations at bouldercounty.org, and you can address those to me directly if you'd like. And I think with that, we will turn it over to questions. Hi, I'm Corinne. I'm with the Boulder Chamber, the, exec, uh, the Economic Development Director. I'm gonna filter some of these questions along with some other members of Boulder County Public Health um, to try to get through some of these questions. The number one question really is about the vacant home requirement. So I was uh, hoping that we can get some clarification as to whether that continues on May 9th. Uh, and what are some ways that people are um, seeing what's the rationale behind it and then how we can um, help our people selling their houses vacate their homes. Yeah, I can give it give it a start um, for from what I know. Um, I think that as far as I know that this will continue um, after the ninth. Um, we may provide more information, but really this is, you know, I think going back to what Lane said, you know, this is going to be the norm for a little while um, until we kind of get a chance to see, you know, where we're at with um, just the illness, illnesses in general. I think, you know, numbers, are they declining? Um, and I think this is just where, where we're at right now. Um, I haven't heard, we haven't heard anymore, I think in the direction of that from the attorneys, like I mentioned, we did get clarification um, yesterday uh, just regarding that it was for, you know, just to be unoccupied homes, vacant homes. Um, and so we'll definitely, you know, if there's any new developments, get those out um, as soon as possible. Um, and then I'm sorry, what was the second part of the question? No, just the direction as to, um what the rationale was and uh, is this going to change as of May 9th? I don't have any background on the rationale. Um, Lane or Zach, do you have any? I think it, again, we're taking the, the state's order. So we defer to our attorneys on the interpretation of that order. To me, the rationale is again, we're in a social distancing component. So if, if those are occupied homes where people are living, uh, people are going right back in after a showing, so we're, we're, we need to avoid unnecessary uh, interactions with folks. So it really does force to look at virtual tours of homes uh, and those other kind of creative and opportunities that don't have to have those 
personal interactions and people in other people's homes and then uh, those those extra steps. And this is Zach Swank with Boulder County Public Health as well. Um, I would add that, that you know, we are still looking at that um, under as it would apply to the, the safer at home order. It certainly makes sense under a stay at home order uh, where you are trying to uh, more severely limit contact and potential uh, uh, community spread. Um, you know, we're still looking at that as a Boulder County requirement for uh, safer at home after May 9th, after May 8th, excuse me. Okay, uh, just a, another question about um, that the, on May 9th, the clarification on May 9th, open houses will still not be allowed under safer at home as well, correct? Yes, that's my understanding for right now until until we get more direction that that's changed. Um, but that's that's where we're at right now. Yeah, that, that's correct. That's part of the, the state order. And so Boulder County cannot be less restrictive than the state order. Okay. Uh, considering social distancing, can two techs drive in the same vehicle? They're actually, we've had a lot of those questions coming up um, as far as just different construction workers. And um, if they are, you know, if they do come from the same household, um, then they should be able to, I mean, we're thinking, you know, six foot distancing. And I think with cars, you're just in a enclosed vehicles. And so that could become problematic. And so we would not recommend, um, you know, shared vehicles unless they're under the same household. In real estate, are photographers, stagers, and inspectors permitted to the home? So that was one of the changes that had, um, I think before they were not allowed, and now I think that they um, can be allowed with restrictions. Um, I think as we're looking at unoccupied homes, um, most certainly, um, I think with, with, you know, you got to think about the amount of flow of people, you know, coming in and out. So, I don't know, Lane. Do you think with with approval of the homeowner that they might be allowed, since it's not like a showing where we're going to have several people coming in and out? I think this that there's several groups that are under this category. So there are trades that need to go into people's homes to perform the work. So you think of a plumber, electrician, some of these other trades that are covered under these uh, different services. So as long as they're following all those protocols, I think those, again, services that are required to be in a person's home, if they're adhering to all those pieces, I think that that, that is covered within the different guidance that we've developed. Thanks. And this includes house cleaners, carpet cleaners, um, any of those services? Yes. All right, uh, there is a question about access to PPE. Um, we've had this on the other webinars as well. So how do they get masks or gloves? Um, what are the resources available for that? We are developing um, some tools that we'll have available. Um, but just basically, you know, with this industry, it's not, um, you don't have, the, have to have the strict you know, medical mask like you do in some of the other industries. Even the, um, the homemade masks will suffice, I think, for this industry. Um, you, you know, even with the mask on, you know, the social distancing is required. So just wanted to reiterate that. But we will provide um, some documents that can give you some ideas on where to obtain masks or how to make them on your own, um, uh, I guess, under, at, I don't think it'll be on the checklist, but it'll be a separate document. Okay. Ooh, trying to get through some of these questions. Uh, <laughs> I'm launching three properties next week. Oh, this was about map, the access to maps. So we talked a little bit about that. Um, okay, so there is a question. Uh, just a clarification, after May 9th, on a safer at home order, you must wear masks to, um, you must continue to wear masks when showing a home or in any way um, integrating with clients, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, 
If a realtor has many listings, how is it possible for that agent to go to the listing after each showing to clean? There's just a, a question as to if there, anybody knows any practices there or how they're supposed to manage that. I mean, I would think that you would probably be keeping some of these cleaning products, you know, at the home, you know, maybe underneath the sink, you know, something where people it's accessible, but really, you know, we are just looking at the high touch areas um, for sanitation. So between, so you're looking at, you know, doorknobs. Um, I think as a real estate agent, you probably have an idea of, of the flow of, of the house. And so, um, and then just, you know, paying attention to what people are touching while they're there, um, just to do, um, you know, a quick clean before the next showing. You can okay. certainly, certainly clean as you're showing if you, if, if that doesn't interfere with your ability to interact with your clients. But yeah, we, we won't dictate how you do it. It's just, it is part of the, the state's order. There was a question about whether this uh, webinar would be available afterwards. Everybody that's on it will get a link to the checklist, some resources, this webinar, and the list of questions they're still soliciting feedback on. Uh, another piece was that the checklist was um, editable, and that's by design. So you can add questions or feedback into the document. It is not the, the final checklist. Um, if you guys want to add anything to that, but that's why it's a, in a Google Doc format. Uh, let's see. Okay, if we are meeting a client for an appointment estimate, do we need to provide the clients with masks or gloves? Yeah, I believe you said realtors need to, but does this apply to other industries? I think you can just request those in advance um, just for meetings. Um, that's what most of the other sectors have been doing, you know, if they are planning on meeting. It's also, you know, if you can meet outdoors, that's more advisable, especially as the weather's getting a little bit nicer, um, just to provide some extra airflow. Is it possible to transport multiple persons in one vehicle, such as passenger vans from a hotel to the airport, et cetera? That, I have not heard of that question before, um, but we can do a little more research and get back to you on that. Uh, there is a, Oh, some of the, some, somebody asked if they could get the checklist for the offices as well. And we will um, include the office checklist with the information that goes out for your actual physical office. Do you guys want to add anything that may be necessary to consider in the office space? Matt? <laughs> um, hey, this is Matt Hannon with um, Boulder County Public Health as well. Um, I think what Amber, um, discussed really applies um, in general. We actually had a, an office webinar this morning at nine o'clock. Um, we'll have, be having another educational session on Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. and you can uh, um, sign up for that and register through the Boulder Chamber website. Um, but yeah, with offices, you know, you're looking at obviously an enclosed space. Um, just to kind of quickly, very quickly go over what we discussed uh, in that webinar. Um, you know, social distancing practices should be in place. Um, a lot of um, really intensive cleaning. So if you cleaned your office, you know, once a day, um, previously, you know, maybe two or three times a day, especially in those high touch surface areas. Um, so, you know, break rooms, bathrooms, printers, um, copiers, that kind of thing. Um, and then as Amber just mentioned as well, um, if you know, May is a beautiful month, hopefully weather-wise. So if you can uh, you know, host any kind of meetings uh, outdoors, um, that's preferable to being in, you know, a stuffy um, conference room. Um, and then, uh, yeah, meetings with, uh, you know, clients, ideally, um, you know, that would be, be done outdoors as well, or maybe a bigger space with social distancing practices in place. Um, so that's just kind of a quick overview of, uh, of any office tips and guidelines. Okay, there was a question as to whether realtors can use the homes cleaning supplies or they need to bring it in on their own. Um, and I believe one of your colleagues um, clarified this, but if you could clarify that for, um, for individuals. I think um, what was discussed earlier in some of these sessions too is really, I mean, soap and waters, you know, 
the best the best thing to use. So I think anything um, beyond that would be fine. It doesn't have to be a specific brand or a specific type, um, just as long as it's it's being done. So there are a bunch of questions about the what people perceive as a difference between the state order and the county order. Lane, do you want to talk about how you might uh, get back to folks when with more clarification? Yeah, I know Amber said they spoke with the attorney, so we'll revisit that conversation just to make sure they're clear. But um, again, we we won't have any answer outside of what that that legal interpretation is. But we will absolutely make sure we're very clear on on the the language and what is in the state order, and and clarify that with the group. Okay. Um, okay, when our techs are working outside by themselves, do they have to wear their masks on all, at all times? Does it apply to tree climbers who are up in a tree? We're outside the real estate, we're now in field services. Um, do they need, this is from a tree care? Do they yeah, need this is, to- uh, again. Um, so the, the order states that masks should be worn still and social distancing at all times. Um, obviously, uh, you know, if you're, you're a tree trimmer, you're 40, 50 feet up in a tree by yourself for an hour. Um, you know, usually that's pretty physical work as is landscaping. So um, the guidelines do say that if the, the mask, and obviously this is, doesn't have to be a medical mask, it can be some kind of cloth mask, um, you know, handkerchief that you make at home. Um, but if it inhibits your, um, your safety or your breathing in any way, um, obviously that's, that's grounds for uh, removing the mask and being able to, to catch your breath. Um, but in terms of the guidelines, um, employees really should be wearing that mask and, and practicing social distancing out in the field. Okay, there's a question about the, if there's a difference between realtors or agents in the, um, in the rules, um, since realtors abide by a different code. I think they would both be included under the, the field services industry. Um, a lot of questions about state versus Boulder. So as Lane said, we'll, they're going to clarify and get back on that. Do we have any additional questions um, from the audience? This is Zach Swank. I saw a, a, a question about um, you know, taking legal advice versus taking medical advice, and and how do we, you know, uh, as public health, um, you know, reconcile those two? Uh, and just wanted to answer that they are very closely aligned. Um, you know, of course, uh, you know, we are Boulder County Public Health, um, and we have our, our community's safety uh, first and foremost in mind. Um, you know, where we're seeking. Uh, legal, uh, the assistance of our, our internal Boulder County Public Health legal team is on interpreting some of these finer points. Um, you know, one of the challenges of the, the situation that we're all in is, um, you know, orders are, are coming from the state, uh, which is good for consistency across Colorado and for businesses that operate um, in, you know, multiple jurisdictions. However, um, you know, since we, Boulder County Public Health, aren't the ones that wrote the order, often uh, we need to seek clarity um, and interpretation of those orders. And, and that's really where we lean on our attorneys. Uh, but in terms of uh, any policy, policy decisions affecting uh, the safety of our community, uh, those are all happening, um, you know, uh, of course, um, under medical advisement. Okay. There's a question about whether or not we're going to be providing some similar outreach in Spanish, um, especially in this field in real estate and field services. Uh, does do one of you want to answer that? Yes, that, that is our goal. We're, we're actively uh, trying to get additional staff for us to be able to field calls. Um, we have some uh, skills within the call center, but we also are going to be working on kind of getting everything translated. And then I think we're also working to host uh, a Spanish specific session, I think 
Zach has been working with folks to try to get a uh, session coordinated. And we're also working to make sure all the checklists and signs are also uh, translated into Spanish uh, so that, that that information is available in the documentation area too. <clears throat> Are there any additional questions outside of the Colorado versus Boulder ones um, that people have? Okay, I see one. So just a reminder, we'll be sending out the checklist for this. We'll include the checklist for office. Um, and a reminder, there is an office session next week as well. Um, and then any questions that were not answered or need more further clarification, there'll be clarification sent out in an email. And then this recording was, uh, this was recorded. So we'll be uh, attaching a link to this recording in the email as well to all registrants and attendees. Um, at this time, I'll turn it over to John Tear to kind of close it out and give some last minute thoughts. Yeah, just a, a short close out. So first of all, just to thank everybody for participating in this conversation. And, you know, obviously there were questions, but implicit in many of those questions were feedback, was feedback for the uh, Boulder County public health officials. And as they said, they're going to go back and reconsider some of their um, or some of this information and see if that leads to further adjustments that we will then address in the education session that's upcoming next week. So uh, important that we had you represented here today and, and had this kind of feedback and, and dialogue. Um, I again want to thank all our partners, chambers, and economic development agencies across Boulder County. This is a collaboration. We're working hard together to address the business needs of our community, get us back up and running as soon as possible and get our economy back on solid footing as soon as feasible. But as we emphasize, always with safety and public health in mind. Uh, and then just to thank our Boulder County public health officials. They've been great partners. They're doing very difficult work uh, and we are working together with them to make sure that we get again our businesses running um, but to protect our community's public health. So um, thank you all. And we wish all of you the best in getting your business, your field service and your real estate practice going strong again as soon as feasibly possible. So take care. Thank you all for being with us today. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.